Hey, everybody. Welcome back to All the Things Harry Potter. I'm Nate, and I'm hanging out with my wonderful wife, Jade. Hey! And we're about to get into Chapter 8, The Potions Master. We're going to spend some time in the dungeons with the master. (laughs) (laughs) Dirty mind. (laughs) Speaking of weird stuff, we come across a lot of words that I've never seen before, and Jade got a chance to correct me on. (laughs) Love that. And on top of that, at the end of the night, Chantel got a special gift. Yeah, that was a fun surprise for all of us because I had forgotten. Yeah. (laughs) So stick around and find out what she got. Yeah. It's good to see you guys again. Good to be back. Good to see you guys. What's going on? Been a little bit of a break. This lovely Michigan weather and sickness has kind of put a damper on our recording, but we're back in business. Isn't that such bullshit? For three, four months out of the year, not only do we get snow dumped on us, but there's also like an extra month where everybody gets shitty sick. Like, I got it. I just got over it. And then you guys got it. And we all got it bad, too fucking hate winter (laughs) and it's cold (laughs) i can definitely say i do not wish that sickness on anybody it was rough no that's why i was fine to skip a couple weeks because i i'm i've been lucky so far and it skipped me so (laughs) the podcasts had to wait i'm sorry everyone (laughs) what what was that you have what it's coming out of where? <laughs> nah, that's cool, man. You guys just stay home. That's all right. <laughs> yeah. But we're back. We're talking chapter eight, the potions master. Yeah. It's a it's a short one, so we can pound this one out, I think, pretty quick. <laughs> yeah, there's really not too much to this one. It was just kind of going over Harry's first classes. I do have a question. Um, do they get maps? this first day because they talk about how they got lost a whole bunch getting to the great hall it takes them to like friday to get down there without getting lost and the staircases are moving there's trick stairs there's fucking doors that don't open that are just walls how how are you gonna get from class to class on time ever i couldn't even do it in high school to add to what you were saying they also have staircases that lead different places on friday just because you mentioned Friday. I was like, yeah. And they made it to Friday, and then Friday, shit was different again. Right. But they never... No, I don't I don't think they ever did mention anything about maps. 142 staircases. Different staircases. That's all I'm saying. And no, I think they had to wing it. I think they were like, here you go. Fucking figure it out, Find, your, find that, your way. That first week of school is hard enough with, with a fucking map... And a school that everything fucking stays in place. So can you imagine the stress put on these 11-year-olds? 11-year-olds? <laughs> Trying to wander through a fucking dark-ass, cold-ass castle. When me and James were going to school, when we were 14, not 11, but like 13, 14, our school was in the shape of three L's right in a row, and that shit was confusing as hell. You can never tell which corner you were in because all three corners looked exactly the same. Hogwarts must have been a fucking mess that first day, dude. (laughs) And you got stairs that disappear halfway up and you just got to remember. Like, what happens if there's no stair there? Does the kid fall through and break his neck and his face? (laughs) What happens? Why would they leave something like that there? Like, there's a bunch of kids running around. Of course someone's going to get hurt. <laughs> Can you imagine me walking out of a vanishing step? Uh, I would die. You would run back to your dorm so fast and be like, it's cool. I'll learn from in here. You guys just send me an owl. I'll copy it and figure it out. <laughs> that would have been it. So that was just my first thought when I was thinking about all the staircases and all this shit. Like, where's your map? Eventually, they do make it. Transfiguration is the most interesting for me because they're talking about changing shit into animals. That'd be super fun. It would be fun because I would love to be able to change, like, a chair into a puppy. But also, 
I feel like that can lead to really not great situations, which was a school full of kids being able to learn how to make living creatures. They say they have herbology, the history of magic, charms, transfiguration, stuff like that. Why don't they have, like, how to hold your wand 101? Because this is, like, first-year students, and it says before that some of these kids came from muggle families, so they don't know anything about magic. But now they have all of this shit. It's their first day at school. How much of this is common knowledge they're expected to know? Because there's no class like, hey, so you're going to be a wizard. Like those old shitty movies we had to watch when we were little. There maybe should be a little bit more of a easing into it, especially for the muzzle, the muzzle, right. the muggle kids. I, I, I think that charms is a little bit more of the wand. It is, yeah. Intro. You do get a little wand flicking action there. When they wave their wand, are they doing a charm in the air with the wand? Is that so That's charms is actually to... wands class? Yes. That would make sense then, because when I was reading that, I was like, why the hell don't they have a Wizard 101? (laughs) How to wear your fucking robe (laughs) without looking like a douche nozzle, you know? (laughs) I mean, I I do still think there probably is a couple things that would fall through the cracks if you were new to the wizarding world that kids like Ron would take for granted. I think that there might be an intro to magic class. That would have been helpful. Friday, they finally make it to breakfast without getting lost. And then they have double potions with the Slytherins. And that's shitty. And the owls bring breakfast. Nope. The owls bring posts during breakfast and somehow don't shit all over the food. And everyone's fine with owls being on the breakfast table. I was wondering (laughs) about that, too. About how the cleanliness happens with the owls. I don't care how trained these animals are. They definitely eat disgusting mice, and I don't want it near my bacon. It says Harry freaked out the first time he saw them because they all came in through open windows while they were eating breakfast. So they all, like, fluttered into the building at the same time. You can imagine, <laughs> yeah, like hundreds. And owls are big. Like, Well, he's got, he yeah, he's got a snowy owl. So that's like a, that's a decent size. Barn owls, I think, are a little bit smaller, but... Even a small barn owl is still a big bird. And hundreds of them came in through the window at the same time. That would make anybody shit their pants. <laughs> Can you imagine if one owl flew in here right now and they're on the table? <laughs> Which one of us is getting our letter? We're going to fight over it. For one. I'm just saying the amount of chaos that that would create oh. right now. On our table. That would be And awful. in real life... Just get it outside. The owl would not be bringing a letter. It would have something dead. It would have right. something dead in its claws. It'd be a thing. It'd be horrible. And to James's point, yeah, they're all flying over the table where everybody's eating. Does Dumbledore give him a stern talking to? Like, look, do not shit by the food. <laughs> I will fire you as an owl for the school if you shit on the food. Their buttholes are magically clamped while they're inside the Hogwarts grounds. <laughs> they come inside, they can't shit. Right. It's it's just, it's set up that way, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> Which I, think I appreciate, you're something. but also feel like they didn't shower before they came in the Great Hall. So there's still an issue of cleanliness. <laughs> True. You literally don't know where they've been. Right. I'm going to step back a little bit before breakfast there. They introduce Filch, the caretaker, Mm -hmm. and how he, they make a a note that he knows the secret passages of the castle better than anybody other than the Weasley twins. (laughs) Oh, yeah. And they talk about his creepy-ass cat, Mrs. Norris. (laughs) Mrs. Norris as well. I got that on here, too. They're like... A bunch of kids make it their sole purpose in life just to give Mrs. Norris a good kick. (laughs) (laughs) Fuck you, cat. Get the hell out of here. Not that you should kick a cat, but (laughs) this one apparently is causing fucking trouble. We're not condoning this in any way. No, absolutely not. Nobody likes Mrs. Norris. 
I mean, I think it goes, again, to the narrative that cats are way more bitchy than dogs, and dogs are better. Like, cats are okay, but they're their own thing. <laughs> like, they don't really care if you like them or not, ever, and Mrs. Norris is no exception. She doesn't give a fuck. <laughs> That's true. And I think we'll find that with every cat that we see in the stories going forward, because they all really don't give a shit. Even Professor McGonagall, who is also a cat, does not give two shits about how you feel about her. <laughs> <laughs> that face you made was perfect. <laughs> if eyebrows could drop a microphone, Jade's just did. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> oh. But also, going back to earlier on how there's not really a specific class on, you know, flicking your wand the right way. <laughs> 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 but they they make it a point to talk about how Harry <laughs> screw you guys. <laughs> None of us are mature enough to handle this conversation right now. But uh Harry but makes I have a, a point. comment that magic isn't everything he expected it to be. He had to study the night skies and herbology with Professor Sprout where they had to learn the different herbs and yeah. Herb. Herbs. <laughs> <laughs> you would want to talk about the herbs. <laughs> I want to talk about Harry getting invited to tea with Hagrid because I just think it's like, it's just super funny of all the things that he could do it's this big burly hairy guy and he's like, come have tea. <laughs> Not come hunting or something. <laughs> Gonna have tea. A little Friday afternoon tea. <laughs> Even though it came in from an owl, which is pretty fucking cool. Hagrid's like, hey, buddy, wanna come over and play? <laughs> and Harry's like, fuck yeah, buddy. I'll be right over. Especially when you think <laughs> about the fact that Hagrid was probably at breakfast. Right. Why wasn't he there eating? <laughs> Everybody was getting food. Hagrid doesn't strike me as a guy who would miss he was a meal. preparing no. for tea. <laughs> <laughs> it's so fucking bad. It might be sad. <laughs> it's definitely not the sneakiest way to send somebody a message. <laughs> Once they get into potions, pretty quickly we realize that Snape really actually does hate Harry. Like, a fucking lot. Kind of a douchebag. I like how it said it in the book, where Harry's like, he thought that Snape didn't like him, but he was wrong. He fucking hates him. <laughs> <laughs> no beating around the bush. I did like, too, that they kind of compared his eyes to the dark, cold, empty tunnels. And Hagrid has dark eyes, too, but they're, like, warm. And there definitely is two different kinds of eyes that are dark. You have the evil motherfuckers, and then you have, like, the teddy bears. <laughs> His first speech is full of real fun little phrases, like softly simmering cauldron with its shimmering fumes and things of that nature that ensnare your senses and are, are very fun. And then he also says, you aren't as big a bunch of dunderheads as I normally get. And I think that's where I got the word dunderhead which I mentioned a few episodes ago, and you, Nate, were all like, what the fuck is a dunderhead? I learned what a dunderhead is at 11 from Snape. There you go. Hmm. <laughs> well, I had never heard that term before <laughs> just now. So, <laughs> well, yeah, I don't know. It's fine. I just, I realized it as I was reading. I was like, oh! <laughs> this is where... <laughs> Now I can prove to Nate that he was wrong. Fuck yeah. <laughs> I, it was more that I felt validated that it was an actual thing. <laughs> Fair enough. And then, and then Snape goes after Harry, kind of, and he asks him a few questions. And this is one of the things that's kind of floated around the internet for a while. Snape asked Harry what he would get if he added the powdered root of asphodel to wormwood. Asphodel is a type of lily, and it's 
meaning is my regrets follow you to the grave. And wormwood means absence in Victorian flower language, apparently. So he was making a statement 